Good morning, everybody. It's Dr. Brace here. Welcome to Facial Plastics Friday. And we're going to continue our talk about facial fillers with your request, tear troughs. So what is the tear trough? Tear trough is the little hollow that occurs right in here. And this is basically where the orbicularis muscle, the muscle that circles your eye, inserts onto the bone right around your eye here. And as we age, a number of things happen. The bone will recede. The ligament that holds the muscle in place will get a little more lax. The malar fat pad will drop. And what we end up having often is a little bit of a convexity, a shadow and a convexity. So a double kind of bubble, little lump here. So a lump from the eyelid, tear trough, lump from the cheek. And that causes a deep shadow and it bothers a lot of people. It doesn't have to happen with age. Some people have congenital uh, tear troughs because they have shallow eye sockets or shallow orbits, which causes their eye to stick out further and for them to have a deeper tear trough here. So why would you fill this? You'd fill it to try to um, obliterate or lessen the shadow caused by the volume loss here because of the aging process or congenital factors. And so the tear trough is a very powerful area to fill. It's also probably the most difficult area to fill in the face to get right. Technically, it's not hard to put filler there, but technically it's very hard to put filler there well so that you don't look like you have allergies and have swelling and you don't have blue discoloration called a Tyndall effect where it looks like you have a permanent bruise. And I've seen this last up to three years after someone's had filler there. Tyndall effect is basically the light refracting through the skin and the gel of the hyaluronic acid and causing a blue um, tint or a blue discoloration of the eyelid. So tear trough filler, what, what do I use? Uh, how do I do it? I like to use Restylane Plain. I've used Restylane Refine in the past. I know a lot of colleagues use Bellatero, but basically you want one of the old, thin, soft fillers like Plain Restylane, that's my favorite. And really, you need to place this on the bone, on the periosteum, as deep as you can to avoid um, a Tyndall effect, but you don't want to go right onto the periosteum or into the ligament because you can cause prolonged swelling and edema and an allergic looking eye um, if you put too much filler there. So conservatism is the rule with tear trough filler. It's also important to never fill somebody to 100% correction in one setting because you can almost guarantee that with absorption of water that it's going to look overfilled. So good rule is to fill someone to about 60 to 70% where it looks uh, corrected. Let the healing process happen, let the swelling happen, and if you have to touch it up later, it's always easier to do that than to try to start dissolving it out. The other thing to consider with tear trough filler is basically all the surrounding areas of the face. If someone has a deep tear trough, often it's best to fill the cheek here first, sometimes to fill the lateral orbital rim, sometimes even the inner aspect of the nose here, because you will frame the eye with filler in the, underneath the thicker skin, and then you will need less filler in the actual tear trough. So it's a very technical um, uh, area to fill to get it to look right. I like to use a cannula. So I start with a little needle poke down in the cheek. I use a cannula to come up and you basically want to be right in the souf, the sububicularis oculi fat pad on the lower aspect of it, kind of right down on the periosteum, but not into the periosteum. So I use a cannula to get there and we do little amounts of filler kind of in an up and down fashion. I do this the way I would do fat grafting. I find if you fill from the side, and put filler in that way, you end up looking like you have a little sausage under your eye. It's the same with fat grafting. You want this to be imperceptible. You want this to go in um, in little tiny aliquots that are not gonna be perceptible to the eye, not gonna look like lumps, not gonna look like allergies. And I find the best way to do that is with a cannula with vertical filling like this. So I will fill across the tear trough, which usually goes from the nose to about the pupil line. And then I will fill out here in the orbital malar groove. Essentially, you have a thickening of the orbital malar retaining ligament, and you wanna avoid that because you can get a lot of edema, a lot of swelling that's hard to get rid of. It can persist for years. Um, danger zones, danger area. If anyone's ever done filler or had filler uh, performed, uh, you know, or you should know, that there are case reports of blindness from filling around the eye. Usually it's from the glabella or up under the eyebrow, or, but, this area here is the area of valveless veins. It's the danger triangle of the face. And if filler goes into a vein, it can propagate backwards in the vein and block 
your retina or your retinal vessels and cause blindness. And so the infraorbital neurovascular bundle is about a centimeter below the orbital rim between the medial limbus and the pupil. So between the color, the inside color part of your eye and the pupil. And that's a that's an area you wanna be absolutely away from. Another reason to use a cannula and is is to protect that zone. You also wanna be careful of the angular artery coming up the nose. And um, I find that a cannula with a side port that's set back from the tip helps keep that safe. So that's my approach to tear trough filler. I'll show you an example here of um, a patient of mine that I filled. This is an immediate post fill look. So you can see it's about 70% corrected because you don't want to overcorrect it and cause a lot of swelling. Send us your questions if you have any. I'm actually cheating. This is Wednesday when I'm filming this. I'm going to be in Miami for a conference this weekend. So we'll send some updates later in the day from the Yellow Telescope Conference in Miami, Florida. Everybody have a great weekend. Bye-bye.